the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers. Of course, this is one of Chris's favorites. We all love Jamie Chadwell. He came on the show with us last season. They uh, Or no, I guess two years ago when all the COVID stuff was going on. But fantastic, fantastic coach. Sexy style of offense. It, he, he does the option, but a lot more passing. Very accurate passing. And he does it fairly regularly. They still run the ball, you know, more than a 60 to 40 clip. But really fun team. This team, however... I know they're bringing back quarterback Grayson McCall, and that's certainly good. You want your signal caller back, but they're number twenty or number one twenty-two in returning production, forty-eight percent. It's number ninety-two on offense, number one twenty-five on defense. That defense, while they weren't great last year, uh, they were number fifty-one in PPA per drive allowed. They were still good enough that they went ten and two, and then of course went to the bowl game. And you. You can't afford a drop-off in that spot. I know that the offense is good. Uh, PPA per drive was number two in the country last year. Their PPA margin was number three. That's how good the offense was. But on offense, again, you are missing a ton of guys. I mean, this team lost 15 starters from last year's team. Uh, Everything does revolve around the quarterback, Grayson McCall, talking about the offense now. But who are the playmakers? The running back, Jones. The wide receiver, Hilai. I hope I say that right. Healy. Um, and then the tight end, Isaiah Likely, and three offensive line starters are gone as well. Like, those guys are all gone. Who is going to step up to be the playmakers here? Obviously, when you have a Grayson McCall, you can make playmakers. You, your quarterback can make guys good. We saw that with Tom Brady all those years that he was at New England. Uh, Chadwell's offense is still going to be a lot of fun. Option principles, deadly accurate passing. It's almost impossible to stop. But again, was this just a ton of talent that all seemed to develop at the same time? And then they finally found the right signal callers? Or, eh, I, I mean, can they develop? That's what I'm curious about. On defense, uh, they, they've made major upgrades the last couple of seasons. But what do they look like with only 41% returning production? That's what I'm curious about. Potential star power, defensive end Josiah Stewart, cornerback Strong and Boykin, only 102 snaps returning at linebacker. And one of those guys had 90 of them. That's not good. You don't have really any experience. Uh, can the defense gel early? is the question here. I'm not certain yet. <laughs> I, just, I just don't know. Uh, the keys to this season here, I've got develop the offensive line and establish new playmakers, which should theoretically be easier because, of course, again, quarterback uh, McCall is back. Defense has pieces, uh, but number 125 on returning production is not good. Seven total transfers came in, five on defense. They only brought in one linebacker transfer, and, I mean, it wasn't exactly a big name. So uh, the question I've got, of course, for this season, is Jamie Chadwell a lifer here because of the type of offense that he runs, which is, to me, the sexy option. Is anybody going to be willing to hire him because of all the negative stigma that has revolved around somebody running the option? He is showing you that you can do it and pass the ball and still be a really fun football team. But I think he's also shown that you have to have the right quarterback. you got to have the right guy. But I think you're, you're seeing that across the country. If you're going to win in college football, you got to have the right quarterback. They are worth so much to programs now. And Grayson McCall is – the fact that he came back and didn't transfer, uh, I believe he could have gone to the NFL this year – he put out that statement about him pissing teal and whatnot. I, this is just a fun team to root for. I've got him at eight and four again. I, my, some of this might be bias. Now I don't think that they are going to be very good in conference. I've got them losing three games in conference. Uh, I've also got them losing at Virginia in the non-con. So I don't think they're going to be great in conference, but. Still, 8-4 and four is 8-4, and four. and if you can do that three straight years at Coastal Carolina, why could you not do that somewhere else? That's my question. I'm, I'm interested what this team looks like because the returning production is not great. Do you have enough depth? Do you, was this just uh, the stars all aligned for Coastal Carolina or, you know, over the last two years, or is this something that can continue? Is it something that can be built? It's not just a flash in the pan. It's not just a a strike of lightning. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris.
Chris B. Giannini at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.